everyone can have access to it. All right, recording has started and we are good to go. Again, good morning. Thank you for coming to our new family orientation meetings. We have these scheduled for the next three Tuesdays at 10 o'clock. All three of them will be uh, different information, so you can come to all of them. You can come to just one of them, uh, and we will um, post all the recordings online and send out links for you uh, so you can view them if you're not able to make it at 10 o'clock on a, a random Tuesday. In fact, I think next week it's on a Monday. Uh, so uh, I'll explain to you a little bit. Today, we're going to cover some general basic information about SCA. Uh, uh, next week, we will cover carpool. Whew, that's that's a, a meeting all in itself for carpool. And then on the third uh, meeting, we'll cover uh, first day of school, what to expect on the first day of school, and uh, give you lots of times in all three of the meetings to ask questions and hopefully get your questions answered as you join this new adventure at Summerfield Charter Academy. So I hope you find this helpful and useful. And you learn more about the school and, and learn more about us. Uh, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Rudy Swafford. I'm the principal at SCA. Uh, and I'm very thrilled to, to be starting our 11th year uh, as a school and my 11th year as principal here at Summerfield Charter. So uh, pretty exciting about that. I've got a presentation. And basically, all three of these meetings will go about the same. I'll have a short, shortish maybe 30 minutes, maybe presentation uh, and talking about the school or talking about carpool or first days of school, things like that. And then I'll open up the floor for questions. If during my presentation, you would like to ask a question, you can put that question in chat. And I promise that when I'm done, I'll come back, go back through the chat and do my best to answer all of the questions I can. Uh, and while we open up the floor for more questions. So uh, I'm excited to, to have you here, excited to talk with you about it. I'll share a little bit about where I'm at. Currently, uh, we've got some renovations. If you've, if you've made yourself, uh, if you've been to school lately, we've had, we're, we're going through some renovations in our office area. And so I've been kicked out of my office. I'm literally in the Spanish room sitting across the hall, basically from my office. Uh, and that's where I'm coming to you from today, live from the Spanish room. Hopefully, uh, we'll have all of that um, taken care of before school starts uh, here in a couple of weeks. So uh, uh, I, I, I will not be in the Spanish room when school starts. Uh, I'll temporarily maybe be back in my office while we continue to finish up our renovations. So again, we'll have this meetings uh, today. General information about the school. Time for you to ask questions. Next week on Monday, it will be all about carpool, how to navigate morning and afternoon carpool. The following week, uh, our last one will be about what to expect on the first days of school. And again, all of them will give ample time for you to ask questions and be a part of the discussion. Uh, again, while I'm presenting, I'm about to click into my PowerPoint here in just a minute. Any questions or thoughts you have, certainly feel free to jump and throw some in the chat uh, and uh, we'll make sure you try to get answered. I see that Nancy's here with us. Uh, she may even answer a question for you in uh, chat as well. Uh, Nancy is our school ambassador, uh, takes good care of our, our incoming families and prospective families. So uh, if you see Nancy answering your question, know that is an informed uh, person and she knows exactly what she's talking about and she'll be glad to help you. Uh, so I'm going to start my presentation here and uh, every time I come into the Google Meet, it seems to change. Uh, so there we go. Hopefully you can see my presentation and uh, I'll continue to to let people in as I can and again thank you for joining us uh this morning uh, my name is Rudy Swafford I am the principal here at Summerfield Charter Academy uh, and this is what we call our new parent orientation we do it in three separate meetings 
Uh, again, if you haven't heard, this one is the general information. Is I call it the ABCs of Summerfield Charter. Uh, if you've attended a, an enrollment information meeting, there will be a lot of similarities between the two, but there will be more specifics in this one. Uh, next week on Monday at 10 o'clock, we'll uh, discuss carpool, just morning and afternoon carpool. Uh, believe me, it needs a, a meeting all to its own. And then the last week, uh, we'll talk more about the first day of school, what to expect on the first day of school, and how we can help you navigate this first little bit of, of the school year and give you lots of times to ask questions. Again, if you have a question or a comment while I'm presenting, throw them in the chat box. Maybe Nancy uh, will give you an answer. Uh, if not, I'll certainly answer as many questions as I can when I come out. Uh, and uh, we want this to be uh, interactive after the presentation and I, I will happily answer your question. So uh, we're gonna get going here. This is new parent orientation, uh, the first meeting. Uh, this is where we say we are simply better together. So basically we're gonna cover the ABCs of uh, SCA. Uh, that's a lot of initials there. And as, as people keep coming, I'll try to pause here and get them in. Uh, we'll talk about some background leadership basics and how we communicate with you at school, those types of things. And then again, we'll open the floor up for question and answers. And if you you have a question while I'm presenting, oh, I don't want to forget, jump into chat, put it in chat, and I promise you we'll get you an answer, even if it's after I am finished uh, presenting. Uh, a little bit about the school background. We are a part of the National Heritage Academy's network. Uh, and um, that network began in 1995 in Grand Rapids, Michigan with Excel Charter Academy. It has since grown to a hundred different charter schools. Uh, many of them even, uh, a handful of them in high schools as well. Uh, and we have coverage in nine different states. And currently there are 15 in North Carolina, five in the Greensboro area. Uh, you would have Summerfield Charter, Greensboro Academy, Gate City Academy, uh, Summit Creek Academy, and Phoenix Academy, which is basically in High Point. So uh, lots of activity with National Heritage Academies. It's a long, it's been around for quite a while. Uh, SCA was founded in 2012 as the sixth North Carolina school. So you can see that North Carolina, NHA North Carolina schools have really grown. There were six of us when we started in 2012. A few years later, there are 15. So the charter school movement's alive and well here in uh, North Carolina. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Rudy Swafford. I'm the founding principal of Summerfield Charter Academy. I've been here for all 10 of our school years going into number 11. A little bit about me. If, if you want to know about me, that's uh, me, uh, some pictures of me, my family, a dog, uh, and uh, uh, I've had I've spent 24 years at National Heritage Academies. I'm going into year 25. That's a long time. It's founding principal here at Summerfield Charter. We're going into our 11th year. Oh, I didn't update that. Previously, I was a principal at Greensboro Academy for about 10 years before moving to Summerfield. Uh, I've actually now passed that threshold that I've been the principal longer at Summerfield than I was at Greensboro. Uh, before that, I taught fourth grade, and uh, I was I was born and raised here in Greensboro. That's uh, a picture of me in my office. I'm famous for wearing my bow ties. Uh, those are my four kids to the right of that picture. They are scattered about. Two live here in Greensboro. Two live in Pennsylvania. Uh, that's my dog, Chester. Uh, he's getting on up there in age like his uh, owner here, and uh, he can't quite get up there. Uh, and take that pose anymore, but uh, that's him. And then several years ago, one of the coolest things I've ever done in education is I took a trip to China and uh, I worked with English teachers. And that's my, my small group of English teachers that I worked with there in China, uh, helping them learn how to better teach English. Uh, and so that was a great, exciting trip for me. Uh, other parts of our school leadership are our deans. We structure our leadership so that we care and focus on care for our students. We have our principal, deans, and teachers all focused on taking care of the people surrounding them so that we all care better for 
our students. Our dean, uh, our Rebecca Swain, uh, works with our kindergarten through second grade team. Heather Carlson look, works for our third through fifth grade team. And Miranda Robertson works with our sixth through eighth grade team. So if you are in either one of those grade levels, or maybe you have multiple kids in different grade level ranges there, you might expect uh, interaction with those deans over the course of the school year uh, uh, to answer concerns, questions, help out in the classroom, things like that. So that's our leadership model here at SCA and our school leaders. So some of our school basics that we don't talk about. One of the things that I like to say, if you give me one minute, I'll tell you that we are a student-centered, caring community of academic excellence. That's what we want SEA to be. And so how does that flesh out at our school? Well, I'm going to share a little bit about each one of those right there, and I'll, I'll tell you a little more as we go. Student-centered. To me, it starts with strong communication to our families and a real focus on challenge and growth for our scholars. Strong communication. My NHA leads to direct information about your students. You have your, uh, you've probably already been there if you're at this point where you're registered. You've already been to My NHA and you can see that information over the course of the year. You're going to get more and more information like attendance and grades. You're really able to contact your teachers and, and whatnot. We even have a new communication tool that I'll be talking to you about briefly uh, as well. Parent teacher conferences are held at least twice a year. We actually stop school for a half a day uh, twice a year and do those types of conferences, you know, the old fashioned face to face type of conferences. That doesn't mean you can't talk with your teacher any other time. You absolutely can. And we hold multiple conferences over the course of uh, the school year that aren't during those times. Newsletters uh, that come from our teachers almost on a weekly basis. The principal word comes out about once a week from me on Friday afternoons. And then through a new process, which is called School Connect, we keep our families informed. In fact, you should have gotten a School Connect message today uh, informing you of this Google link and reminding you of this time. Now, that may not maybe not mean much to you, but today is the first day that School Connect has gone live for us. Uh, it, was a, it was a different system beforehand. Today is the first time we've used School Connect. It's the first time we've been able to use School Connect. We're still trying to figure that out. We've got a little bit more to learn there, but hopefully you've got the communication through either a text message or an email uh, reminding you of the time and giving you the link. Uh, and uh, we'll try to keep that going. And of course, the school year, we'll use it for phone calls and emails and things like that. So uh, we'll learn more about that as we go. Uh, more things that we talk about when we talk about our scholars is our focus on challenge and growth. We want to make sure all of our scholars have the chance to grow, uh, both academically, um, mentally, uh, relationally, uh, in all kinds of different ways. So we do a lot of things like small group instruction in reading and math, especially where we can concentrate and drill down a little bit more on the individual needs of students whether or not they need more challenge or whether or not they need more remediation. We do our best to make sure everybody has that opportunity to grow. Struggling learners receive that personalized report with direct intervention services. Uh, if, if they so qualify, whether it's in the classroom or maybe pulled out uh, to receive more support. Advanced learners, we have opportunities to broaden their horizons and take advanced reading and math. That starts in third grade. K2 does that in more small group areas, but we actually have classes that take over uh, in third grade and fourth, uh, third grade and up where students are working a grade level ahead in the subjects of reading and math if they so qualify. And then we have a, a use of blended learning and technology to target individual learning uh, for students where students can do some through their one-to-one -one Chromebook, uh, some learning either in the classroom and or at home that's which is specific to their needs and targets their learning. So that's some of the ways we really want to make sure that we're student centered, uh, both focusing on our challenge and growth and providing that strong information to our families to make good decisions about school. Caring community. Now, this is really important to me, making sure we have the community that we all want in a school uh, and that we we are able to 
know what to expect here at school, know how things might happen, uh, even if it's a difficult situation. So we're going to talk about some of our things, our moral focus, the parent leadership team, which is the, the volunteer side of our parents, uh, some expectations around dress code behavior. And of course, we're going to address school safety uh, here as well. So moral community or the caring community starts with our more focused virtue of the month. We study it every month. It's a different one each month. Uh, and we integrate those studies into our classrooms, into the things that we do, the way that we communicate with our students. For example, one of the one of our moral focus virtues is courage. Uh, and the, the definition for courage is confidently act according to your beliefs, despite fear, difficulty or opposition. We'll study that definition as a school, but each grade level also has a more uh, grade level appropriate working definition for kindergarten. Believe you can do hard things. Fourth grade, have the confidence to be yourself. Seventh grade, stand up for yourself and others and put your beliefs into action. So we don't just say we want to focus on courage or respect or wisdom, which will be the first one we concentrate on in September. We want to make sure that each grade level has an opportunity to expand their knowledge around that virtue each month. So uh, we do some moral focus uh, days and assemblies and things like that that we'll be talking to you more about as well. And then we always participate in the annual Moral Focus Writing and Art Contest. Uh, that was pretty significant. Last year we had a, a winner for the art contest in uh, the K-2 division for all of NHA. So that was really exciting. Uh, another way we do it is the parent leadership team. Now it's the volunteer side of our uh, school. You may want to think uh, PTA or something like that. We call it the parent leadership team. Ooh. Well, something happened to me there. Let me get it back um, going. I think we're back here. All right. Parent leadership team. So we have different parent teams that work uh, in different ways with the school. We uh, make sure that we have that opportunity so that you can use your specific gifts and abilities uh, inside the school, in the school setting. Uh, examples of some of these teams that you can serve on. Uh, the, the, SC, uh, the Parent Leadership Team Foundation is Invest in a Child. That's our big fundraising effort for the year. We only do one for the year, and we simply ask people to donate to the school. Uh, it's usually the first part of the school year, and uh, we don't sell cookie dough. We don't sell magazines, candy, any of that. We asked for donations. Last year, we set a record raising uh, for the, the school and all the years for the donations that were given to the school. Uh, we also have the extracurricular team that organizes things like the Grasshoppers Games or our fall festival, which is a big deal coming up in October. Uh, we hope to have the 5K and things like that return. And then staff appreciation, my favorite parent team, uh, and how they put together uh, and show our staff how much our parents appreciate what they do. Uh, each year with things like Teacher Appreciation Week. So our parent leadership team will be set up at uh, Open House here in a couple of weeks. And uh, you can go in and learn more from the, our parent leadership uh, officers and how you can become involved immediately in the community at SCA. And that's over and above volunteering in classrooms, which you would coordinate through your teacher. We'd love to see you here. We'd love to see you here on campus whether it's for helping for lunch or making copies or assisting in the classroom, uh, running um, flashcards for students so uh, and things like that. So lots of ways for you to be involved here in our community. Some of the expectations we have for our parents and guardians coming into school, a lot of these are laid out in our, our parent student handbook, uh, but maybe you haven't read that yet. Uh, and that's okay. But here's uh, just a few highlights. What we really expect from our community, scholars present and on time for school. Uh, it's important to be here. It's important to be here on time. Uh, school starts at eight o'clock in the morning and learning starts shortly thereafter. So being here on time is really important. Being here is important. Um, during the pandemic, uh, we began to think that it's not as important to be there in person. Well, 
pandemic is now behind us. Being at school is very important. Being here on time is very important. So you as our parent and guardians, we want to make sure that you are getting our getting your uh, scholars here for us. Schools dressed according to code. We've talked a little bit about the dress code. It's in the handbook. Uh, I want to make sure our students are uh, dressed according to code. Uh, it's Im important for us. So that, that code provides opportunities for us to uh, promote school unity in this community. And uh, we want to make sure everybody follows it. So uh, that's something that we expect is important from our families. Scholars picked up on time. We have no buses. There's no public transportation that comes here. We have some uh, daycares and things that pick up uh, with buses. If you need that and research that, we can get the information on that. But our, our, our scholars really need to be picked up on time. Our staff have things after school to accomplish, whether it is uh, you know, after school staff meetings, uh, working with students after school, coaching, um, clubs, all of that type of thing. And they need to be free to do that. And they can't be if we are here watching your scholar waiting for you to get picked up. So getting picked up on time is really important. Agreeing and adhering to our commitment of excellence contract. Uh, everyone, all of our students, teachers, staff, agree and sign this commitment to excellence that talks about some of these things here you'll have that opportunity to sign if you haven't already online i want to make sure that that's there you're joining a unique community of scholars and uh, educators and we want to make sure that we hold ourselves to the right standards to create uh, the community that we all want to be a part of and so uh, it's really important that you adhere to that. Some other things, behavior management, and it's really important how we manage the behavior of students, especially when something may go wrong. So uh, it's important, the process of managing behavior at the schools that you understand the different ways that we do it, different markers that we have. Then this is by no, by no means a comprehensive examples because uh, behavior takes on many different uh, flavors, many different uh, there's just so many different things that has to do with behavior and the individual that's involved. But some of the things that we do as a school are important. It centers around the words respectful, responsible, and safe. It's what you're doing respectful. It's what you're doing responsible. It's what you're doing safe. If it's not, don't. Seems kind of simple, but if you're being respectful to other people, if you're acting responsibly and you're being safe, you're a great example of our caring community. If you're not being respectful, responsible, and safe, well, we need to speak to you about it. We need to speak to your scholars about it. And we need to offer opportunities for them to grow and learn how to be respectful, responsible, and safe. So we make sure we have direct communications with our parents through School Connect, through um, email, voice phone calls, conferences, we let you know when there's an issue and how we address it, how we can ask you to help us address it, how we can work together and partner uh, to make sure that your scholar has the opportunity to learn and to grow uh, when it comes to uh, their behavior. And we use a given five strategy uh, that helps us manage our students and direct them to take responsibility for their behavior and ways that they can, if needed, correct and move on with their behavior. And those five strategies are support, breakdown, expectation, benefit, and closure, uh, giving you support for whatever behavior situation you, you find yourself, breakdown, what's wrong with what's happening, what is the expectation that you need to follow, what's the benefit for following that expectation, and closure is how we can bring it together and make sure that our behavior is now aligned with what we need it to be. Now, we also use a color coded or level strategy to address it. You probably have very small print here and I'm not going to read all this to you. Uh, but pre level one, you're basically green. We also have a purple level when students are behaving uh, in a positive fashion can be rewarded uh, with a positive fashion. Yellow one or level one or yellow is maybe a small misbehavior and it's a small correction. 
that's handled between the teacher and the student. Level two is blue. Uh, and level two means there's been a continual small misbehavior uh, that uh, even though I've worked with you as a teacher, we've not been able to correct that yet. When we get to level two blue and level three red, uh, we're going to make a parent contact. We're going to let you know that, hey, this is going on. This is what's happened here at school. This is the correction that we've uh, asked your scholar to achieve. This is how we've addressed it. If there are consequences involved, this is the consequences and we'd really like your support in helping align this behavior to all of our expectations. Uh, those are well over 90% of all of the different behaviors that we uh, address. Never gets above a red, uh, a couple of extra corrections, and a communication with parents. Now, level four, fives, and six. Uh, level four is continue uh, minor infractions over a long length of time that has led us to maybe decide that we need to make a create a uh, behavior plan for that student. Uh, and so we'd work directly with our parents to make sure, again, this is not, nothing egregious is happening, but we've had a lot of all staffed behavior, or we've had some disrespectful behavior that needs to get re be back realigned. 90% uh, of our students never move over 90% of our students never move above a red. Level five and six are more egregious and extreme misbehaviors. Uh, this is a substantial misbehavior that isn't, uh, it's more of a one-time event type of things, uh, such as maybe you get in a fight. Maybe you use uh, curse words uh, or, or uh, a slur of some sort that's very disrespectful to another scholar. Uh, that's more of a level five where we do have parent uh, conferences uh, could result in things like suspensions and things like that. But again, 95% or more never go past even a blue. Um, so it's something that we work hard on, but we want you to understand that this is something that's important to us. Uh, in order to create the community we want, we want our students and our teachers and our parents all behaving and meeting the expectations so we can all have the community that we want to have. Uh, school safety, it's extremely important these days. Uh, first and foremost, we want to be safety conscious. We're always evaluating our safety efforts. We do our drills. We do things that we need. Uh, we um, prepare uh, what we need to prepare to make sure that we are safety conscious. We have a dedicated staff member. Uh, and a safety team. I am safety man. You might meet safety man coming up in the school mm -hmm. year, but I am the safety person. If you happen to hear noise come through the microphone, where I'm located in the school, I'm outside. Outside my window is the dumpster. And of course, during my presentation, the uh, guy comes to pick up the dumpster, making incredibly loud noises right out the window. Do not be alarmed. Build an atmosphere of we for school safety. We want our students to be aware. We want our staff to be aware. We want our parents to be aware of what we need to do in the building to be safe uh, and constantly safe. Uh, one of the main things we, we do is regular practice and professional development around safe. We have a threat management team. We have a saf safety team that goes through tabletop scenarios. They evaluate things like, hey, we just did a, a school lockdown drill. Here's some things that we might need to approve about that. So we constantly want to be able to develop that. Uh, the drills, some of the drills we do, fire, lockdown, severe weather, a uh, room clear drill. There's something happening in the room that say someone needs to, um, that we need to exit a room or we need to clear our students out so that they can be safe. We'll practice all of these over the course of the school year. And one of the main things we do is access control uh, to the building. Uh, if you come during the school day, uh, all of our outside doors will be locked with right now the exception of the front doors where you are able to be walk come into uh, the front foyer, but you cannot enter the school building any farther than that. You can't get into the office. You can't get into the hallways. You have to be buzzed in to the office once we see who you are. We're looking uh, to hopefully develop another way to even uh, have the opportunity to buzz you in from the outside 
uh, first. We don't have that capability yet, but we are working on that. So school safety and being safety conscious is really important to me as the principal, and it's something that we really uh, strive to do here. So that's a part of our community. The one thing your students will learn very quickly is our Stampede Creed. This is it. It is written so that all of us can say it. Uh, our teachers, our staff, our parents can all say this with us. Uh, there's no reference to being a student. And we wanted to make sure that this was a community effort. And we literally do say this every day here at SCA. Academic excellence is the last piece uh, that I'll share with you. And we kind of have three points to rigorous academic focus, regular practice, verifiable results. Uh, rigorous academics with a college ready focus. Uh, we follow the North Carolina State Standards as a uh, charter school. That's what we are held accountable to. Uh, opportunities to excel in the arts. So we have, uh, especially in middle school, advanced art classes, band, uh, musicology, uh, Spanish. I am in the Spanish room. Uh, uh, we have Spanish here uh, and different other ways to expel outside of just your academic areas. Uh, we expose our students to world, American, North Carolina history, depending on the grade level and where they are at. And again, we have those advanced math and reading programs that begin in third grade. Uh, so we have, for example, groups of third graders who will be taking fourth grade reading and fourth grade math, reading novels that would be fourth graders and uh, taking the fourth grade math curriculum, for example, which leads to students in eighth grade taking math two. Uh, and taking basically freshman uh, high school English uh, in eighth grade. So uh, it can lead to some, some strong ways setting you up for some success in high school if you're able to handle that and, and qualify for it. Regular practice, we do have homework. Uh, hopefully we have reasonable expectations for homework for, for our scholars. We practice their basic facts and knowledge, but we learn to think and solve problems. Uh, coming up, I, I can't, this is uh, year 25 for me in education. I've had to solve problems that I can tell you I never went over in any of my degrees, uh, both bachelor's and master's degree. And so being able to think and learn to solve problems that come your way is a great piece of knowledge that we're going to make sure our students have the opportunity to grow in. We do a lot of working with teams and small groups. And we have curricular tools that can be done from home that helps you as a parent see what they're working on and how they're learning, but also allows you to be involved in that learning. And finally, verifiable results. Uh, we don't have our, our, you know, our report from the state for last school year yet. Hopefully we'll have it soon. But uh, if you go back to 2022, we had exceeded expected growth uh, the, for the sixth year in a row. Uh, with our uh, integrated testing report card grade is currently a B. Uh, we're hoping to uh, improve that coming up uh, this school year, but we haven't got that official report yet. Uh, and then we really spent a lot of time uh, working with intervention, small groups, combat that learning loss of the pandemic. We feel like we've pretty much emerged from that piece. We'll kind of talk about the pandemic like it used to be a long time ago. Uh, so our, our kids are really maybe hit their stride back post pandemic. Now, one of the things we like to say is that we are simply better together. Uh, it's important for me to think of the school as a school community, not just pockets. Well, you got the parents, you got the students, you got the staff, you got uh, extended community. I really want us to build one community and the way we do it, we say together, simply better together. And those three E's that we talk about are enrollment, engagement, and expertise. Obviously, you have to be here to be enrolled. And if you're here, we want you to stay engaged. We want you engaged as a, a family. We want you engaged as a parent. We want our staff engaged. And we do that by trying to build everyone's expertise. There'll be opportunities for you to grow as a parent uh, here and learning more, uh, learning things coming up uh, that we'll talk about in, our, in the fall. Uh, there'll be engagement uh, that hopefully you'll be engaged and hopefully stay enrolled here at SCA. So some things about school communication, we've covered a little bit about it, uh, but basically your basic information, 
School hours is 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock. So we start at 8, we end at 3. That's why it's important to be here on time. Also important to pick up on time. Carpool begins at 7.20 a.m. Uh, that's where students are dropped off and they walk into the gym. Now, the first couple of days of school, we may do that a little differently so that students get more used to where their classrooms are and things like that. Lots of times on the first day of school, kids are bringing in extra things that we want to make sure that they're uh, set away. But uh, generally at 7.20 a.m., you would drop your students off carpool, come into the gym. Again, we will deal directly with carpool next week. Uh, front doors open at 7.40, so students will be allowed to come in, in the front door at 7.40. Dismissal begins at 3 o'clock, uh, and uh, it's completed by 3.40. So if you're showing up after 3.40, we're waiting on you. Now, trust me, all that in the first few days of school, you know, a little different, and we'll talk about that next week during carpool time. Uh, some other times for uh i think i missed my slide here nope oh student-centered caring community of academic excellence uh that's a brief overview that is the abcs of sca and uh i'm i'm happy now to pause for some questions uh so i'm going to exit out of my um presentation here and come back uh see what we got going on for questions and open up the floor uh mr swafford there has been a lot of questions about uniforms i think i got all those covered okay um we had a question about third grade and fifth grade field trips which i believe i got covered we would go to old salem for third grade fifth grade we always do a jamestown plantation and williamsburg field trip which Mr. Swafford usually goes on. I do my um, best. And then there was our last question was about placement for middle school into our move up programs. And is it mm -hmm. an automatic transfer if you were with the AG program at your prior middle school? Um, and for that one, Shweta, um, your dean, Mrs. Robertson, she mm -hmm. will be reviewing all of the prior EOG scores and test scores coming over with Yash's records to make the best decision possible. And this this holds holds true for anybody um, considering the advanced program. Right. We need to wait till we have our test scores. Um, and we will also be doing assessments during the first, what, two, three weeks of school, Mr. Swafford? First couple of weeks of school. We, if, if we, uh, especially with new students coming in, we don't know you obviously. And so we want to be able to see your information. Uh, if possible, we may wait on an assessment, but we don't want to wait long because the, you know, the, the classes start and they're off and running. So we don't want to wait too long to, to get you in there. And there's a space availability issue as well. And so we want to make sure we, we have that opportunity and evaluate it uh, properly. Okay. Thank you. So from other questions. In the chat, I think that was it, Mr. Swafford. Okay. How do you assess kids uh, and, and in their advanced classes for them? Well, we we don't necessarily have an assessment for our students. We we look at prior assessments they've taken before they come here but we do do a couple of diagnostic assessments at the beginning of the school year that we do for everyone. Uh, and not just to assess whether or not you're ready for advanced classes, it's one that everyone takes. So we can see where everyone is kind of currently with their learning uh, in, in reading and math. It's called the, the NWEA. They'll take that in the first about week of school. Uh, and then there's a couple of different assessments depending on the grade level that, that gives us a, gives us more information about it but we're also going to we will also be looking at previous in the grade test scores anything else that's provided to us to make sure we place those so that assessment is only uh, only for the new students or it will be also for the existing students some of the assessments are for but oh, the nwea will be for both uh, everybody takes it we don't have a specific advanced uh, track assessment. 
we use a lot of different assessments that you've already taken previous schools and then the ones at the beginning of the school year. Okay. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is Mino here. Uh, I would like to know about the dresses. So, uh, uh, like, uh, it, it should whether it should be only French toast or it can be a Wonder Nation brand. Uh, it, there are if you if you look in the handbook, there are uh, multiple brands that you can use. Uh, French toast is one that you can order. Um, Old Navy, uh, Target uh, uh, is also one. Um, the the board specified our, our board of directors uh, are the ones that uh, decide on the dress code and uh, they update it occasionally and have added multiple ones. So if you look in the handbook, it'll tell you exactly one. So no, it doesn't have to be French toast. It can be uh, there's multiple different options that you can buy and use. Okay, uh, I ask this because the, there are uh, other brands available in uh, other stores. So with the same uh, kind of colors. So that's what I wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. So there's there's multiple different brands that can be used. Okay, thank you. Mino, along the lines with the um, with the jumpers, um, it doesn't have to be brand specific, but I will tell you as a mom of kids who have gone here, I have two girls, um, I am completely biased toward the French Toast brand. They wash really, really, really well. You don't have to iron them. Um, for the girls, especially the cute little khaki squirts that they have wash really well. Um, and the same thing for the jumpers. So just... Not okay. mandated, just just a mom opinion. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I think our board's done really well in opening up the dress code. We, we want a unified look, but we want to make sure families have affordable options uh, as needed. And uh, it really gets, if, if you haven't been a part of a school that has a dress code like this, it gets rave reviews from our parents. Mm, not as much from especially our older kids, but, uh, you know, from the parents, they love the part that I got school clothes and I got other clothes. So even the younger kids, uh, I hear moms and dads saying, go put your school clothes on because they can mix and match all this together. Boom, out they go. Uh, and they're ready to go and their school clothes are taken care of. Yeah. Mr. Swafford, I may I may have been zoning out, but did you mention spirit days? No, I don't think I did. Because uh, um, I, I can put a link out here to where the parents can buy the our spirit t-shirts if you want to talk oh, about Oh, yeah, that'd that. be great. We do have spirit okay. days Uh Usually a couple of times a month where you're you you don't have to wear it. You can dress down a little bit. You might wear blue jeans and your Summerfield Charter Academy spirit wear, uh, which would be a, an SCA T-shirt of some sort. Uh, and we do that the first Monday of every month. And then we usually have another one over the course of the month that's dressed down or we dress up in a specific fashion. Uh, last year we had like a tie dye day. Uh, we had. Um, uh, everybody wear blue day, things like that, uh, where we dress a little casual. We have um, days where you dress up like career day and you dress up like your whatever career you'd like to do, things like that. So we, we do some fun things as well. Uh, I have a question. Hi. Um, um, I sign up for my son to be there on this Wednesdays and Thursdays to drop off for kindergarten camp or summer camp, something for nine mm -hmm. to 12, what's that's gonna be like? I drop him off and I leave and then come back mm -hmm. to pick him up? Yes, yes, kindergarten camp is like a half day of kindergarten to get the students used to being in the classroom, being used with the, to their teacher, used to how to navigate the school. Uh, they will, will do everything like that. And it's like a half day school. It's, it's optional, so you don't have to do it, but it really helps our kids on that first day of school They've already come into school. They've already seen their classroom. They already know where they're going to sit. They already know where their cubby is. They know all of those different things about uh, what kindergarten is going to be like. 
And so when you come on the first day of school and it's a massive amount of people, they have a good idea of what's going to happen. That's a good that one. Day. And will they know who's their teachers by this next week? Uh, I don't know if it will be by next week or not. I know that we are in the process of um, putting kids in classes, but I don't know where we are with the communication of it. Okay. Yeah, I, I can actually answer that one. Uh, kindergarten specific, um, you will be assigned to a homeroom for kindergarten camp. Um, that is not necessarily going to be the homeroom teacher, though. Okay. Um, the, the kids coming to kindergarten camp will have the opportunity to meet and interact with all the different teachers, all their new friends in kindergarten. Um, but we have not solidified our classroom yet for kindergarten. So that will happen a couple of days after camp is over. Thank you. And last thing, is there, the, when you assess the kids, are they going to be as a, like academically labeled, they're going to be placed in different classroom, like based on their knowledge, level one, level two, level three, or it's just going to be by last name or randomly? Are, are you, are you're talking specifically for kindergarten? Is yes. that correct? Yeah. Yes. In yes. kindergarten, you'll be placed into a homeroom, but all the assessments and things will not change that. Okay. Uh, okay. It would just be where you are we don't we don't don't do that in kindergarten first and second grade okay got it thank you guys thank you mm -hmm. hi rudy um so i have a question about uh, mainly on the water breaks and the bathroom breaks okay so how it looks like um uh, for the you know for uh, my my kids are in first grade and third grade so i just mm -hmm. want to know um how how about the water breaks and the and the bathroom breaks? Uh, I'm not I'm not sure exactly what you, you want to know as far as how they happen. Uh, sometimes uh, classes will take uh, whole class bathroom breaks, uh, but students are also allowed to you know obviously go to the bathroom as needed and granted permission. There's usually a process inside the classroom of this is how you do that. Uh, there are bathrooms uh, centrally located downstairs and upstairs for different grade levels okay. that they use. Uh, kindergarten classes have a bathroom that they share between the two classes also. Water breaks, uh, students are allowed to keep a water bottle with them on desks so on their desk so they can have you know water at the ready. But if they need to go to the water fountain, we have water bottle dispensers at each one of our water fountains. So they can either get water from the water fountain or they can put water in their water bottle and go back to class. Okay. Um, is that uh, each class have their own rules of giving a water break and the bathroom breaks, like asking for the water uh, water breaks and the bathroom breaks? Yeah, each, room, each class would have a procedure for that. Okay. Apparently, you know, they, they may have a sign or, or something, we allow generally one student out uh, per class. So, you know, they may have to wait just to, to somebody comes back before they go. Uh, but yeah, we all have a procedure for- Okay. Things. Okay, and my second question, and it's going to be the last question also. Uh, so you said that you will be assessing the uh, kids after coming to class and you will reshuffle them based on the uh, based on the assessment or something like that for third grade upon? Uh, no, we don't reassess or, or, or do that for all shuffle third them. Shuffle them, okay. no. If, if a student has the opportunity to be placed in an advanced class, uh, what third grade does is they, they're in their home room, for example, and then the, they will switch classes only for reading and only for math. So okay. they may go, if they so qualified, they would go to that advanced class for reading or math. Okay. But, yeah. Uh, quick question, if you guys don't mind. Um, so my children are going to be new coming to Summerfield Charter Academy. I've got a kindergartner and a upcoming second grader that's coming mm -hmm. in. Um, we previously went to Jesse Wharton. And so my question is there, they have obviously what they call special. So there's art, music, mm -hmm. you know, things of that nature. How does that fit into the curriculum in that if there are certain things like the running club and things like that, that we want to kind of plug in there, where does that fit in throughout the school day? Or is that something that's like an after school activity? Uh, well, it's a combination question. We have uh, 
they'll have a special every day, okay. which will rotate between art, music, PE, Spanish, and technology. Okay. Uh, yeah. Technology library time. Uh, and they'll rotate through that every day. You know, they'll have one of those a day, uh, every day. Uh, after school activities like running club, we have a running club and some things like that that happen after school. Most of that is after school. Okay. So we have a little bit of both there. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. I have a question regarding the kindergarten camp. Um, are they supposed to wear their uniforms to kindergarten camp next week? What's well, the question about whether or not they wear, do they need to wear uniforms for, for kindergarten camp? Yeah. Answer, no, you okay. can if you want. If you want them to wear their school clothes, that's fine, but it's okay if they don't. Usually, it's up to the kiddos. A lot of times, the kiddos are pretty excited to wear the uniform, so it's whatever you want to do. Okay, that's fine. Hey, I, have I guess so. <clears throat> Sorry, made it. Yeah, uh, thanks, Principal Rudy, Nancy, and Tim. Uh, so I have a quick question. Uh, so like regarding food and meals, uh, can you tell a little bit more uh, about the meal system? And then can we provide meals to the kids in the school? That's the first question. And second thing is, can you go a little bit over about the security again, like security system and things in place? Thanks. As far as food, you can you can bring your own lunch if you want. The majority of our families do. Uh, they bring their own lunch. We do have a hot meal option that you can um, purchase if you're not qualified for free and reduced lunch, uh, but you can purchase it. Uh, we'll send out links and things. You have to have an account and, and, and all of that, but you can purchase it and students would go and pick it up. They, we have a kitchen that's attached to our gym. They make the food and you kind of go to the gym, pick up, and, and come back to your classroom to eat. Uh, but the ma majority of our students uh, bring their own food uh, from home, uh, which is uh, up, up to you. So um, the, the question again about security, I covered in the presentation earlier, so I don't wanna rehash all of that, uh, but we uh, make sure our, our um, building is secure. The only way to come in it is the, the front doors and the only place you can get in is the foyer. Um, from there, you have to be buzzed into the school or into the office uh, to go anywhere. That we drill on a regular basis, lots of different drills, uh, and we'll be heavy on drills, especially the first month of the school year. Uh, you know, fire drill, a, a lockdown drill, and some, some different drills that we do to make sure our students are prepared for any type of emergency situation. Uh, we're very safety conscious. And uh, we have a safety team that evaluates everything we do. So that's that's kind of it in a in a in a quick nutshell. Uh, but again, I'll post this recording of this whole thing up. So if you wanted to go through it, and there's more detail earlier. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I have one more question. Um, mm -hmm. So the dress code. I was looking it up on the website, and. Um, so it's kind of mixed. The tennis shoes are saying like black or specific questions. Does it matter if it's like what kind of tennis shoes they wear? No. Okay. Just not. no wheels or nothing crazy, right? Right. Right. All right. Awesome. No wheels, <laughs> things like that. We don't want, you know, we don't want girls or whoever coming in in heels and 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 things like that. So that's more specific, but we, we don't regulate tennis shoes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Mr. Swafford, there was one other question uh, from Shilpa. Does the, okay. the design of the squirt matter? Also, every brand has variation colors for khaki. Does that matter? No, as long as you're 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 using one of the approved brands, that's fine. Uh, and so, whatever the approved brand squirt looks like is acceptable. May I ask a question real quick? Yes, sir. Um, I apologize. I'm at work, so I got pulled away if this was answered already. I do apologize for that. Are, will we be allowed to, like, walk our kids in to the kindergarten the first couple of days, or is that a no-go? And if you no. answered that, I apologize. 
No, I did not. Uh, that, that's actually scheduled for the third one of these meetings. But uh, yes, you, you'll be able to, um, and, and we'll talk about it more specifically in, in, in meetings. Uh, the first, especially the first day of school, it's extremely crowded. We run out of parking spaces. And so I'll tell you, yes, you certainly may. You'll be able to come walk them right in, take the pictures, all of that fun stuff you want to do for, for kindergarten. We make uh, access for that. Just know that it's going to be crowded. <laughs> yep. yep. But yes, uh, you're certainly allowed okay. to do that. And you said next week you're going to cover Carline and all that. So we'll wait on yes. that. Yes, we'll talk a little okay. bit about that in carpool next week. That That's a whole, we yeah. need a whole half hour to talk yep. about carpool. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Sure. Yes, Michelle. In fact, one of my favorite things to do on the first day of school is to count how many people are crying, whether there are more students crying or more parents crying. And nine times out of 10, there's there's more parents crying than than students. So it's 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 uh, it's one of the fun things I do as a principal on the first day of school. Uh, well, thank you so much for giving me almost an hour of your time today. Uh, again, uh, once we're done here in, in, in just a minute, I will. It, it takes a little while to get it posted, but uh, I'll get it posted for and send out a link later this afternoon so anybody can go in and view this. And I thank you for your questions because that uh, really helps uh, because you're thinking what other parents are thinking. And so that helps uh, other people who may not have been able to attend that's the question I had and they get to hear their answers. So thank you so much. I know Nancy is here, Terry and, and Kim are here at school uh, and all the different things that you may need going into being able to be part of uh, this community. We, we want you here, but we also want you prepared because it's exciting, uh, but it's maybe a little nerve wracking. You're switching schools and uh, we want to make sure that you're prepared to be here as best we can. So uh, thanks for coming today, and uh, I'll, I'll end this off today. And again, we'll meet next Monday at 10 o'clock, and then the following week we'll meet on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Same format. I'll give a short presentation. We'll open up the floor, especially on that third one, open up the floor for questions and answers, and then we'll post a recording so that uh, you can uh, go back and look at it all you want um, so that you can be pre as prepared as possible. So... Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I look forward to meeting you in person, uh, especially at Open House. That's, that's one of the funnest things that we have. It'll be a big night here. And uh, again, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to Nancy and our office team and myself to uh, answer your questions. So we want you as prepared as possible coming into the school year. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, thank you for giving us this time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys.